Immediately, everything changed. The whole world around us turned upside down, inside out. That is when we saw many of our neighbors, all these people you see in um, suits, very respectable people, we saw them in militia uniforms, in military uniforms, killing and others being killed. You couldn't believe in what we were seeing. This brought me to one of the best lessons I learned from the Rwandan genocide. Each and every one of us has got a kind of dormant wild animal within ourselves that can just wake up one day and break everything we see on earth. This is what I call in my autobiography the powers of words. With words, you can save lives. With words, you can kill. When some people were using words to save others, others' lives, the radio, the RTLM, Radio Television de Micolin, was using words. Those journalists, the media people, we're using words, urging militia men to kill the maximum, saying, for instance, that you, the people on the hills, go hunt for so and so. This guy is hiding in his neighbor's roof. Go and get him. And if you get him, you'll get his car. We give you his house. So killing became a job. The maximum you kill, the maximum you get. Help us to fill the graves, they are not yet full. These are among the words that the media were telling the people in the rural areas. And in Rwanda, you would be surprised because each and everyone listens to the radio. Rwandans rarely read newspapers and books, but each and everyone has got always a transistor, whether in his or her plantation in the farm, in the, on the street, in the road, in buses, everywhere you will see people with radios. So through the media, people, the radio, people were taught how to kill. You will ask me whether the genocide wouldn't have happened maybe if the media were not involved. I would say no. The genocide would have happened because it, has, it had started but maybe not on the same scale.